When did you start Fetch? Uh, we started about two do years we wanna, ago. Do okay, we yeah, want to yeah, start yeah. the yeah. show first? Let's start the show. Yeah, yeah. Can go into that. Now we'll start. What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity. What's 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 sweat equity? My sweat equity. Smoke machine. My, my, my sweat equity. I want to come out like Ray Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Sweat equity. What about my sweat equity? I like the intro. You like that? Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh man, you just buttered Eric's bread so <laughs> much. Butter my bread. Yeah, otter.ai, that's the app we were talking about before we started. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be in the actual episode. Uh, no. You don't do any of the pre-roll chitter-chatter? It's only like me talking for one second and then <laughs> the intro music. That's it's, it. It's all about Eric all the time. You're finally getting it. <laughs> uh, what's it called? So otter, I'm going to uh, want to, what can I point to? That camera. Uh, yeah. Hey, otter.ai. Why don't you become a sponsor for this show? You don't sponsor anything. Uh, I see your online advertising game. We could help with that. We could be your uh, your your case study. That's a living case study. I'm posting all the transcripts of every episode. I'm going back in the files and doing it. Here's why it's important. Because transcribing podcast episodes, and we post them on uh, Sweat Equity Pod or uh, our consul- Tokabaga Consulting, uh, where we do the the office we're in right now, our SEO value goes up an absurd amount. And it gives you the key words too. Right. So it populates the words you use the most throughout it. And then over time, it's AI. So it does teach itself yeah. the important keywords that you want over time. Yeah. So ours are shit, yeah, the first, dick, the first, <laughs> wiener, fart, <laughs> the first, boogers. The first like couple of episodes we did it we while gotta we're, calibrate this thing. we're recording it live like it's like butt pussy <laughs> <laughs> bin wall balls or something so uh yeah it, so that's awesome and the other part is the parlor trick of the dictation there used to be uh brian you're 22 yep there used to be a commercial brian like, greenbaum oh, yep. he never actually said his whole name I, that's that's why we co-host Z- what do you do without me i was gonna slip it in <laughs> Yeah, Eric. like like Cosby. Another one of the keywords. <laughs> Slip it in. Um, what I was saying is, there used to be a commercial. Um, I want to say it was like 14 years ago, probably. They used to play it the NFL Sundays. I remember that. Remember when it was like IBM or Microsoft? They're like, this is the future. Right? Mm-hmm. And it was like a dude just dictating in his office, at home office, walking around. He was like in a uh, like a penthouse. Yeah, like, like way oh. too nice. Yeah. And it was, but the thing that never we never got out of any of these transcription or dictation apps was the ability to see it live, like okay. pop up. Yeah, they spit it back to you, and it's all messed up. Yeah, you're not very impressed. I'm imp- maybe that's a because Snapchat figured that out like four years ago. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this to me is really interesting because I'm I'm assuming you take a lot of meetings with Fetch, uh, and. There's so much stuff to go over, and you're probably a one-man show most of the time, right? Yeah. And so I don't want to have to write down, like be scribbling down notes every yeah. time I meet with someone. And so I just go, hey, is this cool if I put this on? Uh, and then I have it open. And I kind of, just like our our, um, our door handles that are touch with our fingerprint, it's a nice little it's a yeah. nice little like, hey, we're, yeah. we're, in, the, we're in Ybor City, which yeah, is like for real. the Bourbon Street of Tampa kind of area, but... Uh, we got our shit together, yeah. you know. So it's like, I and it's know. free, right? Uh, yeah, you get six hundred minutes a month for free, which is a, a lot of time. That's yeah. a lot. I mean, we're doing uh, sixty-six minutes a week for the most part. Yeah, but so. you can, you can drop in audio files, and it'll okay. just do it for you. Then you can tag speakers too. Oh, nice. So I can tag. Uh, it'll it'll write it out like a transcript. So I tag Eric in an yeah. episode, okay. tag myself, and then it'll be like, cool, come back and. It literally says like come back in 10 15 minutes and it'll all be like whoosh, it'll all be uh and it's picking up like my voice separate wow. from your voice is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow, that's yeah. Now what I want to do is I want to see the difference between how I have it doing it right now with the iPad just on the table cuz it's not going to pick up better audio and then drop this audio in afterward and just mm, see what the difference yeah. is. That's a super nerd shit yeah. thing I like to do. Yeah, that's but a good idea though. So why not, with this microphone, we tell everybody you got to get it uh, get up, right get up, up it. right up gotcha. in your grill. Here's the lesson I'm sure everybody's sick of hearing us say, but 
imagine this robot penis <laughs> coming at your face, not coming at you, but like <laughs> at your face, and then it's the dick the hole. You want to talk right at that dick hole area. Gotcha. I was going to say, but about that, it's it really would have been perfect for me. Even last week, I was going to speak to a MBA class at UT, uh-huh. and I was thinking right before I was going, how could I kind of put this down into my notes and really look back into what the questions were brought up and things to look over what was going being said, and that would have been a perfect uh, app for that situation. Or at the very least, pop your phone up there, just video that thing, and if you need to go back, you can use it, and like he was saying, drop it in later. This is better, though. No, well, <laughs> this is definitely a cooler par- parlor trick. But if you're using it for your own, just to, to get better, just throw your. I mean, everybody's got a phone. Boom. So that reminds that me thing. of the the thing w- I got drilled in my head by a former boss and a mentor. Now, uh, mouth drilled in the mouth. Drilled in the mouth <laughs> by this microphone. <laughs> yeah. Well, like his name was Coach Sandusky. <laughs> yeah. I was a Penn State football player. You know, I was helping out with the summer camp. So. Um, I didn't think I I'd go think down he, that route. I don't, I don't think he did anything with the players. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it was a whole ring. You were one fire. of the kids visiting the camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. I, I was. <laughs> I stopped in and saw something. I yeah. Anyway, I saw some things. The, um, the deal with what, he, what Eric's trying to get to is we talk about get all the meat off the content buffalo you can. Mm. What that really means is, okay, uh, everything you do, this is what was kind of drilled in my head. Everything you do well is a marketing opportunity. Mm-hmm. So if there's any pragmatic advice to take away from this episode, that's like a huge thing. And then I've kind of flipped it into anything you figure out on the ops level internally might be another entrepreneurial endeavor. Mm-hmm. So we, we have a couple of things we've been kind of slowly working on because pricing in our industry is crazy. Mm-hmm. So we, there's a couple of things we've had to figure out on our own and we go, Hey, all right, that was really tough to figure out. Or if we, whenever we figure it out, maybe we can license this software out yeah. later, right? So that's how kind of good ideas can be spawned. But I'm going to spend it on that first part. Yeah. You're doing an MBA class, get a Mevo camera like we've got. It'll auto direct for you. To yeah. live stream. Yeah. That's the other big part of it. It's Wi Fi. It's then you shoddy. Get all the mediums out of it you can. Okay. Uh, before you go to an MBA class, you're going to write about going to the MBA class, mm-hmm. right? A blog post yeah. over 300 words, better 500. Mm-hmm. Um, then you film it. Uh, you maybe do a live stream because you, you're still incentivized with live stream through most of the social media platforms. It's such a weird. I don't. I, it's so weird to me. Like why live? Sh- that it's live. It makes it so much more interesting. You don't get it. Not. I mean, it's not that I don't get it. It's just so so weird to me, right? Like. Why does it matter if this is real time or not? If you're not even, if you're not going to interact with somebody, sort of thing, like uh, that, well, that's the that's why more you like morning do news that's live, and it's just like okay, because mm. people want to have that little fuck up. Yeah, I, it, it's just weird. You it's an interesting edit. thing to me. I know. I just find and, it interesting, and like, especially oh, like amateurs, you know, doing it. You don't have like a, a cough button like they do on the radio, yeah. or you don't have a forty five second delay, yeah. or if you tell an awesome joke, you don't have a soundboard. Yeah, like to fake laugh. What? Like I got, a, I got two keyboards. I'm sorry. Here, I'm that? sorry. I'm, I'm gonna get to you do. color coded. John Paul Labity should be here, but he's on vacation. So producer, he's usually behind the glass, not paying attention. Um, so long story boring. I mean, that is uh, like you should prop the video up. You may not use it, right? Mm-hmm. You may not live stream. You may just use it to go. How do I get better? Yeah, you know, watch the game film kind of thing. Um, but it doesn't hurt. No, it's yeah, about being thoughtful mm-hmm. for yourself. Really, yeah. it's not being thoughtful like in a caring way. <laughs> like a lot of marketing nowadays is about like capturing the moment while it's happening. But if you think yeah. about it a little bit ahead of time, like we try to write the to do list in the morning, mm-hmm. you're like, what? How can I get more out of doing this? Because you're going to teach for free, right? Yeah. So there's a social contract. You should be able to get something True. out of it. Mm-hmm. Same goes for um, any any charity, corporate, what's called CSR, corporate mm-hmm. social responsibility. Benevolence. Yeah, there's a social contract there. They The good charities or nonprofits, if you're helping something out like um, spayed or neutered, whatever the, uh, let's say that's a charity you helped, the one mm-hmm. that Bob Barker loved, <laughs> which is a weird one. If you really think about it, every day. Yeah. To Don't forget, yeah, to talk about chopping your dog's uh, insides out. Yeah, and that, and that, that's a Do you real- think it was because his name was Barker? 
<laughs> oh my yeah, here god you go. i never yeah. thought about that i just thought of that i'm not even high <laughs> and i'm my mind's blown <laughs> yeah holy shit who do we tell about this nobody there's nobody that cares <laughs> yeah can we get skinny mics like that <laughs> that's good we should get skinny mics here Maybe we have to hold him down yeah, near our exactly. belt loop. Yeah, like, <laughs> really? he's holding it at his, at his belly button. <laughs> we are going to do the, the stand-up version, I think. We should do the stand-up comic uh, podcast where we have to stand in front of the mics. I we think, don't get to I think we can wander around the studio. It gives more juice, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyway, so tell us, about, tell us about Fetch. Tell us yeah. about how you got... How you got to here? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll just start with an overview of the company, basically. So Fetch Social, we're a dog social media, but it's basically for dog owners. And our main focus... I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Our main focus right now is trying to make the dog park experience easier. So with our app, like there's obviously like the Instagram type side where you can post pictures of your dogs, interact with other profiles, you know, the basic social media side. But we are focusing largely on the dog park aspect. So on our app, there's a dog park section where you can actually see uh, the 10 closest dog parks to you at any time, no matter where you are. And then with those, it comes with uh, photos of the park, descriptions of the park, uh, reviews that other users have left. And um, you also get to see who's there before you check in. So like if you go, if you have a dog, possibly. Uh, where do we go to find this? I'm going to try uh, to open so it So if up. you go on to the, I, yeah, the app store. And put iOS, fet, fet. Fetch Social. Fetch it's fetch social. Yep. Dot net is your website. Yes. Fetch social dot net is our website. Oh, you that's all secured, though. Yeah, right. I already told him. I've already given him the spiel. I know. Uh, just it, leave him alone. Just isn't back it, off. Now you have the Asperger's where you can't not. I'm like, yeah, but the thing on the hey, thing, I gotta just not Google's set. not going to recognize you as much. I, yeah, Brian, I gave you the preamble. Things, I, I was like, I'm sorry. I just can't help but not say oh, it. Oh, I mean. But, we'll like, it is that. helpful. So I almost So did what that. you get in trouble with it. That's all. I was looking up, uh, on, I, I'm a big Corolla uh, digital listener, and uh, Gina Grad, the, the, one of the second bananas on the, his show, said she had a food blog for uh, No Sugar, No Grain. Oh. And I was looking it up, and I was like, do I email her and tell her, like, there's like four things that are really fucked up on this yeah. site? Or should I just let it slide because I don't even know her? Yeah, you know? I don't know. it's a weird thing. Cause uh, I, I don't think, I think a lot of people would be uh, grateful just because mm-hmm. they just don't know. I mean, most people don't have the the knowledge that you have. Yeah, yeah, but also at the same time, is it a waste of life? Sometimes, like it's okay in person, like you that. Never know. I, yeah. If you think of it All as right, being a Gina nice Gra- I, benevolent Gina Grad, thing, I'll send something to Gina Grand. She you actually want to met. Record it right now. To, straight met, to the camera. <laughs> hey, Gina. No, she met. Uh, she met my two best friends in L.A. at a party and mentioned it on air, and I almost shit myself. They went as bottomless mimosas for Halloween. Okay. Which is no pants. Uh-huh. <laughs> they just wear no pants, and uh, they're. Mimo- How do you it? wear no pants? <laughs> so no pants. They're pants. mimosas, but they're <laughs> no. They just wore no pants, like Winnie the Pooh with a big shirt on, kind of thing. Oh, okay. That's so pretty funny. Covered up. Yeah, they they didn't have their dick. His dick <laughs> like flinging out. I don't know. LA is weird. <laughs> Okay. So at the, so on your app, you can you, yeah. The, so the owners have their own profile sort of thing. Yeah. So is it something that you can like if you have. Maybe you get to know somebody and their dog hates your dog. Yeah, exactly. You can be like, oh, they're there. I'm not going right yeah, now. Yeah, that's exactly. Okay. That's half of the, I mean, that's the, the side to protect yourself. Yeah, on. dude. That's a big, I mean, there's uh, some people out there. There's crazy irresponsible. dogs. Definitely. I mean, it's just those owners are, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Go to like know. a farmer's market and people are holding their dog back from like a four-year-old. It's like, why did you bring that dog yeah, here? If that's, gonna, I mean, you know, that's going to happen. Because they're drives narcissists. Me nuts. Yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that. I, I'm gonna say what you probably will never say on air, but you gotta be playing up to the narcissism of of pet owners. I mean, it is out of fucking hand. We're yeah, people with their dogs now. Uh, that's uh, that's our market, uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, people you, are taking their dogs to dinners, feeding them human food. It's it's a change. They're like means, another part of the human family. Yeah, now, that really. means that they've got time and money, and those are the people yeah. you want to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. You know, you actually have to interact with forming a people. large market. That's for sure. Yeah, I I I'll, I'll occasionally bring the dogs in here in the office, but I'm mm-hmm. always like, ah, this is kind of, even though it's it's our office, it doesn't matter. But it's still like, you know, it's they're not for everybody. Yeah, some people no, are allergic to dogs. And I don't know. I I had a, a girl this morning in the elevator at my place. It was like, oh yeah, she freaked out about dogs and everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just want their ass scratched yeah. know, by this stranger in the elevator, <laughs> and I'm like, me too. Yeah, and I wink. 
Yeah. Yeah. You smell like a dog. So, so all right. I have two dogs. Uh, the dog park we have behind my building is, I think, probably the biggest in Tampa. And hmm. what it, – so, uh, it's it's um, the Raymond – it's named after a, f- a fallen sheriff or something Deputy like that. Deputy Khalifa? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he I knows his say, dog park, bro. I, know, yeah, well, I want to say Wiz parks. Khalifa every time I, I read it, <laughs> black and yellow. That's a of. that's a great park. It's it is large. It's huge. It's large, but there's everybody's kind of checked out. If I could, can I uh, whistle blow on some people out there on this app or no? Uh, well, you or is could. It just, you, it's just for the fun side of stuff. Yeah, it's, I mean that is that is definitely a use if you're a if you're a single looking to connect with ladies it's it's a solid place to go but uh hey your chihuahua shouldn't be in the lo- large dogs one the lo- there's two dog parks yeah. now you know that yeah you, hate, don't. you don't like dogs no. well i like dogs i just didn't like the dog i had he was the worst <laughs> and like having a heart attack every five minutes because he barked at everything and it was the most shrill high-pitched oh. fucking loud noise it was just like and i had babies so it's just like Dude, I can't have this added stress in my life. Yeah, there's a certain yeah. there's a certain thing with your children and uh, my my ex's dog that I have now. She has that one bark that is like, uh, it, yeah. like it like makes my dick go inside myself. Yeah, like. Uh, yeah. Uh, so tell tell I keep interrupting. <laughs> tell us more about the app. Um, how long has it been around? How long have you been doing this? So the app itself has actually only been around since about. The beginning of the year, we started marketing it more towards the end of January, beginning of February. Um, new, new. Yeah, so it's really new. We, um, it's clean. I mean, it's yeah. really easy interface. It's like our story. So basically, we go back a long time at Fetch Social. We've uh, been around for a few, a couple of years, maybe a few years now. Um, You're like, we're old. Yeah. 22. <laughs> yeah, so it was me and three co-founders. Uh, now we're 22, 22, and 21, but I think we were both maybe 18, 18, 19, something like that, uh-huh. around those ages when we started the company. And it was our main goal at that time was trying to make the adoption process better, basically, because right now you have a lot of people return the dogs, kind of, and not find homes at all. Uh, or and just we, drop them off. Yeah, exactly. But around here, that happens a lot, actually. Yeah, really. No, no lie at all. Um, so we thought it would be good to facilitate that somehow. So we wanted to give potential owners of the dogs a chance to spend maybe two hours with the dog in their home or in a specific place to see if they were actually a good fit with their family other dogs different criteria you got to check off sure Um, there's a lot of variables yeah exactly so we we were trying to think of a way to do that but it was basically too capital intensive is what we found out so we started to do a website that was trying to aggregate all the adoptions that are available, pet events in the area, stuff like that. And that was successful, but it wasn't really what we were hoping to do. So we were like, how can we really grow a bigger business? And our thought was to get an app developed. And none of us actually have any... Uh, <laughs> Wrong keyboard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was like, that was... Uh... <laughs> App developed, yeah, huh? App developed. I mean, that was a good <laughs> idea, right? Still works. I mean, that's how I you agree. feel. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I meant to do that. Except when the app comes out, it's literally like panic. Like, oh, oh. something's well, wrong. We, had no, <laughs> we have no tech development on our team at all. No. None idea. No <laughs> idea. What is wrong I with I did you? it again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So. Color coded keyboard. That's what um, we're Color code your there. face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> So rudely completely derailed, you. derailed you. No, you're good. Uh, me and my two co-founders, we don't have any tech talent. So we were basically in the position of how do we get this done yeah. and for a reasonable price, which is always difficult with a, starting a gra- an app from the ground up. Yeah. Uh, but we were able to find two developers at the University of Florida. They were students and they uh, basically helped us. We paid them not too much, only like $8,000, which isn't too bad for an entire app. Um, they can take that back to Asia or India, you know, something. So... They, they but they or, or they probably <laughs> <laughs> outsourced it to India. Yeah, yeah right. They probably. made five grand. Uh, I feel like there's so that's many. The, that's Asian. five. Fiverr is definitely our friend now. We've been a yeah. We're, we're a big. There. Use what you got to use. We push. <laughs> For real. We push Fiverr, even yeah. though it's not five bucks anymore. But, exactly. Um, we we get a lot of like it, if we don't want to Photoshop something or like. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my god. I'm gonna uh, quit. <laughs> I'm sorry, listeners, viewers. I'm not. I'm sorry. Eric's I, I almost did it again. 
I almost did it again. I'm sorry. He was trying to direct this episode. I'm hitting. I got to hit this. So I changed the the, no one, no, the no, keyboard no. down here no has the different fucking thing. I'm just trying to make it. Uh. So, so we got a lot of moving parts here as well. So I'm normally better than this, Brian. I swear to God. <laughs> so you found you found some guys to develop it. Presumably, they are building their book of business up to uh, yeah, exactly. rookies in the game. Well, that's exactly what happened. So they were they have their own app actually also that they are working on and have now put out on the app store. Uh, what is it? It's called Live Green. Not cool. to plug them. No yeah. offense. <laughs> oh, not not so good anymore. I don't know. No, they're our friends. But oh, okay, well we. It's yeah, fine. You there can we go. Plug, you can plug we're we're plenty to go around. <laughs> you can plug um, butt plugs if you want. We don't give a shit. Like, no, they're live green, so they're trying to kind of make your, uh, make you conscious about your carbon footprint. So oh. basically, that's their idea. Um, but they wanted to focus on that, so we kind of lost our tech talent. So now we've actually, uh, lucky enough, we work with USF right now in their handshake program, which is how they uh, assign their interns basically. So we're going to be able to get a, an app developing intern. Yeah, we, we need that to I was literally yeah. thinking about that this morning. Yeah, so we were able to meet with them, talk to them about our business, say we have a good opportunity for an intern. And so we'll be, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be getting our intern. Um, that'll be helping us develop. So that's really a great resource there. And We'll pause you for a second. Let's do our own read for interns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So we we need interns here. We need some grunts, uh, some people that need to build a book report, uh, yep. like a portfolio. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to make our own little ad read for this. My thing with, um, when we had the in, last intern in here, I told her, here's what I want out of this. I want all our interns to get something when they leave. Mm-hmm. I, I want you to want to work here and earn that as a job. Yeah. You're going to have to earn it, but that's the best entrepreneurial route. I want you to leave with a certain amount of skills. I'll, and I'll write any letter of recommendation for you at the end because mm-hmm. I think no one really looks at the intern process and goes here's they just go sweet free labor yeah and it never yep. really works out that way exactly you, you give it up in time so we have working capital issues always since we started here and uh, it is a good way to offset that mm-hmm. because it's either time or money yeah when you're doing any endeavor especially in the tech world yes, how to do. and so you have to kind of incentivize people to go okay what can they get out of this what can a 20 year old get out of here all right i'll make sure you get adword certified if that's what you want to do or i'll i'll help you like you want to be a social media manager like you want to get certified there i'll help you do that yeah we want them to ha- get one thing that they can put on that resume mm-hmm. under the skills area they you know, you wouldn't have got if you didn't come here sort of thing. And it's yeah. selfish. It's not motherly. It's not caring. Like I could give a shit less about the person. Yeah. I, I do genuinely, but I I'm saying like, if you want to think we're crunchy or any of that, it actually benefits you in that way of like the same reason we've never actually had to advertise our company. It's all yeah. been word of mouth for four years. Um, and ironically we're in the digital marketing <laughs> yeah. area. Um, we're going to, ch- we're going to change that, but, because we're, we're about to film some stuff over here in, uh, in a couple hours. But my thing was like, interns are great, but make sure you incentivize them to have something at the end. Mm-hmm. And my thing was like, I want I want them to want to earn money and make it a paid internship. Yeah. But I'm not just going to give you an hourly rate mm-hmm. for because you're an intern. Exactly. Plus, like, it's more satisfying. It's hard because they're, they don't know shit. You don't know anything when you're... 18 to 21. Yeah. Yeah. But and they got to teach themselves a little bit. I, I like mean, to think that I did. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're, you're in the generation. We're in the oldest part of the YouTube learning generation, I'd say. Right. And yeah. so we're on that upper cusp of, uh, of that age demo that we taught ourselves a lot of shit. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about it before you came. Yeah. yeah. I mean, without that, it'd be really tough to do a lot of the things we do. Definitely. And that's what you have to do. That I think that's your generation, especially, Everybody just, it's not even like a, uh, like, to me, I always think about like, wow, get all this information for free for y'all. It's almost like this has been always here. Yeah. You know, like, well, I I was telling Brian before you got here, like, about, um, okay, I was late. The, uh, the Florida prepaid college program that I was on a date with my mom, with my mommy. Yeah. I know you love your mom. Yeah. But like, I really don't see like college and the way that we went to college going to be a thing by the time our kids are 
that age. It's just like, why would you? Oh, trades are better now. Yeah, like you and I, we didn't, wouldn't necessarily care if somebody went to college, but if you can sit down and show me, I can do this and this and this on the computer. Oh, okay, great. You can actually do it. At all. Like, right. I want to see what you've done or what do you have the aptitude to maybe do? Right. Because I was definitely rudderless uh, at some point and like, but if you sat me in a room and asked me questions about, uh, you know, how to do a startup or how to do a business plan or whatever and just... I, that's what I look at. Yeah. If and we have a bunch of people. We've had a lot of people actually email us that mm-hmm. they want to work here. And I'm like, I know. Uh, but the way they go about it is like, hey, I'll see you. So it's like, this is the voice I made. Yeah. Hey, you got any like um, openings and stuff? And it's like, so you just didn't want to send a resume or yeah. just take the extra effort. Anyway, because mm-hmm. um, we're uh, we got about ten minutes. Um, yeah, we're good. What's the uh, where are we stop? So you got interns? Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's really our, our play on development right now since we're kind of lacking in it. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to develop our websites already up and running pretty well, but we want it to look a little nicer. We're going to add the shit tech, out of that. We just <laughs> wanna, we want to add features. So we have a really good foundation. We got like our mini, min, min, MVP, minimal viable product, and now it's all about seeing new features and kind of we have surveys out right now to kind of gauge what our customers are looking for and uh, look to test different ways to drive engagement. I like the the progression that you did where it was you started out with the adoption process and you saw how intensive it was. Mm-hmm. And then you figured out to have the other people, basically your users are doing the data accumulation for you. Yeah. They're, they're going to be filling out their, thank you. They're going to be filling out their own profiles, all that mm-hmm. stuff themselves. And then, you know, it, it's it's way easier for you and better. Like that's yeah. going to be more useful, Without really, doubt. than because the adoption. Pro- I don't know about the adoption process, but I imagine there's a lot of government red tape involved. It's a whole, it's a long <laughs> thing. It's it's not easy for us to get involved, especially just insurance. A lot of liabilities everywhere. It's a, really yeah. Because we our our idea was kind of like to try to bring the dogs, facil- like so take the dogs to other person's home. So any type of like. Oh uh, yeah, you know, bites. Could be a, but yeah, anything dogs like bite that. people. Exactly, yeah. especially you can't ones be that... like, "Hey, don't bite this guy." All right, he's cool. <laughs> Plus, like, exactly. if you can't make it to go pick up the dog, probably not going to be a good. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it was. It's a lot. It was a lot. Then you shouldn't Uber eat your dogs. I didn't. I want to remember. The Uber. There was a news story today that there was a a, a lady who called the cops on a guy yeah, whose dog today. humped at the dog his, park. This yeah, lady's dog. dog. Yeah. Well, he wasn't doing it though. No, no, the dog. It's that's human to dog. That's different. That happens in Florida too. But I know the guy. The guy I'm talking good. dog on dog rape. Yeah, dog, dog rape. I don't know. Can they rape each other? Okay. Yeah, I mean, in this Eric, in this Me Too era. I know you're trying to think of a dog Me she Too pun right now. So hard, I could just see your your churn in there. <laughs> that's all I got. Did. Flea too. Uh, that's all I could do. There yeah, there we go. America. It drops on point this time. So, whoa, hey man, be sensitive. To- <laughs> I'm not still not over it. <laughs> so never over it. So I I get on this app and I'm like I'm looking for some hot pussy, <laughs> um, some puss is what I like to call it to be super gross. <laughs> Even guys think that's nasty. I don't like <laughs> it. I did it to Matt Fernandez, our comedian buddy, last night. I was like. Hey man, you strolling around getting some hot puss. It just sounds like such a sloppy word. <laughs> I know it's like you're a truck driver it's like or something. A puddle uh, at word a flying J. Hey, yeah. you been getting any puss? That's an early morning. Pass yeah. me that J type situation. <laughs> Pass me that skull. I'm gonna go hit a shower. Um, Get one of these lot lizards <laughs> coming around. So, exactly. so can I? Is it? What's the the purpose? Is to connect? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'd say right now we're probably not driven to that. Exa- oh no no not exact. a dating app but i'm yeah. saying like uh, but uh it's it's just so i'd say our biggest utility would be finding the dog park seeing what's there but once you're there you can also i assume some people like to make friends with other people's like dogs and their owners uh, oh dude there's i have a i have my crew i got like a 60 exactly. year old lady we meet exactly. up uh, like saturday sunday mornings i have like, this little know. weird crew of people i've met i don't know exactly. any of their names though Exactly. Yeah, so that's for the like gym crew. That's exactly the <laughs> yeah. point. It's like my crew is we're trying to get all those There's people, that guy, those dog to. park groups and whatnot, to be on there and really centralize their communication, which is not even a thing right now. It's so people they go there, but they don't really communicate the way that I think 
is probably good. Like it's it should be a more social activity. Like you see those same people every time, but you probably you don't keep in contact or yeah, no, you know, no, no, no. It's just there. Name. It's just, like just it's yeah, just yeah. in that arena, like the gym. Like you have these people. I have really. It's sometimes because I'm the way I am. We have this really like medium to heavy talks because I don't like small talks. So yeah, it's yeah. Like, uh, but I don't know who they are. I don't know their names. I just know who I see their face. Like I'm like that redhead exactly. lady. And the thing is with us, so our whole point is you can invite people to come with you. So it's like you meet that day and you're like, oh, you're interested in going the next day. You click that park and you invite them to join you at whatever time whatever day well, how really? about a how about a bluetooth uh find nearby feature oh, there, yeah there's the around me we don't like yeah, linkedin no, has definitely have that. yeah yeah and we want to be able to we kind of want to well we need to get better tech but we're going to have push notifications everything like when somebody you know checks into a park all those type of things definitely yeah you want to pass it through to the other yeah. social so it pulls it into oh, fetch yeah definitely uh, and then well, i would say yeah it, it's it sounds to me like you're, if I had to kind of do uh, Gordon Gecko businessman kind of thing, like you're capitalizing on a on a community that exists that doesn't have any uh, cohesiveness. Yeah, it's a fragmented community that needs to be brought together. Basically, that's it. at the very least, and to share growing. information, right? Because yeah. information sharing, there's a, still a lot of mis and disinformation out there for that. Let's just stick with dogs. Yeah. If you own a Definitely. bird, I fucking don't like you. <laughs> or a snake. Can we agree on that? If you own a bird in your house, snake, I'll, I I like a snake better than what? a bird. Better than a bird. Here's why. You want, Birds can talk, dude. Right. Fucking snitches get stitches, <laughs> man. Like, I'm saying, They're like, watching you. ever walk into a, a, a house of someone that owns a bird and you're like, oh, this place is clean. I can honestly tell you I've never actually been in that situation yeah you hang out with the high class people i don't know how many bird owners do you yeah, know? never never been to a it's, bird owner's it, home dude i have like uh the like the shitty kids i used to hang out with sounds like a messy situation in those it's in those. all pet dander everywhere uh, like uh it's it's so gross and i hate uh i'm having like ps ptsd now <laughs> like you'd like walk in and be like oh there's Tweet. my mom my PSD. mom <laughs> Well done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you'd walk into someone's place and it'd be like, oh, mama's. I'll do it to myself. Mama's on the lazy boy all day and she has her bird and that's all she does. And you're like, oh, this is so. The lights are off. All she does so, is has her bird. <laughs> this is so depressing. Cigarette smoke inside. Yeah. Well, if they're out of the cage, that's the whole weird thing. No, they're oh, not. Oh, gosh. In the cage? Yeah, you don't let them out of the cage. No way. You can if there's guests over because they might attack you. <laughs> Yeah, dude, fuck bird owners, bird owners. Fuck you guys forever. Like, we lost I, the whole demographic here. I don't know. Parrots are cool. Andrew Jackson had a parrot, and he taught it uh, to curse. There you go. Yeah, well, Andrew Jackson. Had he was an all He's up. one of the all-time greatest dicks of all time. Yeah. Like, just he, he's didn't notoriously he, an asshole. Didn't he duel like a hundred people or something like that? Yeah, he like beat a guy, uh, guy to death with an umbrella or something. I don't know. Yeah, we're finding out these uh, these heroes from back yeah. in the day. Maybe not that Such cool. Such great people. Look. A bird, a parrots, I think, fl- flew around pirates because they were trying to pick off all the uh, whatever was available. Uh, Just fun cool. fact for that's you. A very fun Fuck bird fact. owners. You guys Just suck. To sum things up. I've been to yeah, a bird. Route, I've been to route. a goddamn bird convention for my, the, when I worked at an air purifier <laughs> company. Yourself in these. Okay. <laughs> You've been in a lot of bird bird situations. I had a lot of time to sit there and just fucking fume like, <laughs> God damn it, I fucking hate these things. <laughs> hey, you want to check out my air purifier? Hey, it's a heifer fucker. here. <laughs> bird owner. Yeah, that All makes right. it sound like I'm hawking the air purifiers too. <laughs> they weren't even buying them. Yeah, I was just showing it to them. Oh. Wow, that's a bad story. <laughs> Brian's wife. website is uh, fetchsocial.net. Instagram I didn't want to hit social. There you go. I didn't want to hit the two-minute warning thing again. Yeah, yeah, no, we can let it run a little bit. Okay. We don't have to stick to... We heard that stat a while ago. I don't know how much I believe it now, but uh, <laughs> um, considering the source it came from. Yeah, well, Ooh. I was telling Brian, like with guests, it's uh, 33 minutes is a tough, it's a tough squeeze lots of times. When it's just you and I, I get sick of you after 33 right, minutes. Right, right, right. So, so we can, we can, because I, I have a lot more questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, do you hate birds? That, that's the first <laughs> Number one. Okay. No. So with Fetch, I think it's interesting. You're finding your, your journey. I think you'll come back around to that adoption thing eventually, Definitely. right? Is that kind of yeah? The goal? We actually so we're already um, in contact with shelters right now, trying to basically 
advertise their dogs in a sense on our site and get them like a central meetup point where they can like show our dogs are going to be here and get people attracted to their dogs through the app. We're still working on it, but yeah, exactly. We're just working on, we don't have exact ideas yet, but just generally to work with shelters to try to get adopted dogs. We're definitely trying to implement that still. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of, the way I'd probably go about it, you didn't ask, but I'm going to give you consulting (laughs) advice anyway. Uh, That's why we're going long. Uh, yeah, because this is this is what I like doing. I am the law. I that's a new one. Ooh, I like that. Judge Dredd. I am the law. Oh yeah, nice. Can we get some Demolition Man stuff too? Mm, well, that one because it has your name in it. Three shells. Remember that? Nope. <laughs> they wipe their ass with three shells or something. What? Nobody. Brian, this nobody movie knows. came out. Uh, let's see, when you were three, I think. Okay. <laughs> It's called Demolition Man. It's a film. It's not a movie. It's a deep pull for even people our age. Bullshit. Everybody knows Demolition Man. <laughs> that You have a hole in your game, I think. It's right up there with Con Air. It's a movie that everybody's kind of seen because it was on TBS. And you hung over at one point. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you, like Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. You've watch, it has rewatchability to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wesley Snipes. Okay. They, he, was a, he was a big murderer. Mm-hmm. And Taco Bell was like the fa- like the fancy uh, restaurant in the future. <laughs> By the way, the future yeah. is like 1997. Yeah, and the movie came out like 94. It's like, yeah, you guys got to push that back a little bit. There's flying cars and shit. We'll it's so funny. This wrong. By the time this comes an, out, it's such an awesome movie. And then they never reference it, but there's a whole. Uh, they go. They talk about like wiping your ass or something in the future. Stallone is a cop that this movie sounds great, came from the past. To the future. So he's our point of view. Why is it all this way? This is crazy. You know, like, he, he doesn't understand it. Where's the wiping the ass? What? <laughs> There's three sea sh- three seashells <laughs> that they reference as, like, how people go to the bathroom and wipe themselves, but they never sh- tell you what it does. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's one of my favorite, like, no non sequitur. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I have dementia. I just went into a rant. Start uh, from the beginning. We have cold open, exterior, demolition man, go. Uh, Taco Bell. Hour and flying car. 49 minutes later. Um, so, so I think what y'all are doing is trying to add add these features that you found out that we talk about audit resourcing when you start an idea. So when you do ideation, you have an idea. A lot of people like – call me and go, I have an app idea. And I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. Does it exist? And if it doesn't yes. exist, why? <laughs> almost every time, If yes. it does, and they never almost, 99% of the time I've had this conversation, <laughs> they've never even gone to the app store to mm-hmm. look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, just a fucking... John Paul Labadee, our, 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 he's the greatest made-up app inventor of all time. <laughs> well, people, he's got great ideas that never get done. Here's the other thing about apps. People think it's a cheat code to getting rich. It's fucking hard. Like yeah. it's as hard as any business, if not more, uh, more competition. It can be if you have that developer side, if you have this unique programming part, if you have this idea that's such a disruptor yeah. and such a need. But man, for the most so part, many of them it's are just so like hard. it's just like Facebook, but <laughs> it's just this thing for bird owners. That's right. it. Oh, yeah. yeah, which is kind of what Fed Social is, but. <laughs> That's, we have we well, y'all, y'all utility, are more like no y'all are more it. like uh, not Yelp but like you're you you're it's a utility it's more of like uh like maybe it's, it could be a feature on ways no I yeah but exact, but to your point exactly it's it's everybody says oh I have the next social media or basically the next Instagram for X but that's why we're saying our different differentiator is really that dog park feature and having like, the live check in feed. Stuff like that, and a kind of a Yelp type thing for dog parks. Yeah. And we'll eventually, I think, we're going to be able to like expand out to dog vets, dog, like every bit. But that's our focus right now. You should, man. I yeah. want, I want you to be like whistleblowers on vets. Okay, they're fucking scam artists, man. They'll yeah. they'll play you. The some of the bad ones out there, they're like, hmm. hey, um, so, so uh, your your dog pumpkin. Um, so you know, there's a ninety percent chance to be fine. And, um, you know, you don't have to do any, any but, further. There's a 10% chance she's going to die horribly if you don't do this 20 grand x-ray. Yep. And, like, uh, and you're like, 90% sounds pretty good, doc. And you're like, I'm out of here. Oh, I'm doing that yeah. for sure. But uh, it's like, oh, what? Yep. 
Like, do you have the gun to shoot him now? You want me to do it? Do you do it? Dude, and those vets are fucking, not veterans, vets are like. Uh, Veterinary. Yeah, Veterinary. Yeah. Let's not confuse the two. But I'm saying like those, I fucking hate those guys. The yeah. snake oil salesmen. I've been ripped off. We've definitely fucking gouged. I'm trying to get my friend Caroline that I uh, grew up with. She's a vet to come on here and talk shit. Okay. Oh, that would be Make awesome. I think let her tell her about. But I think being a utility is the most important yeah, exactly. part for y'all right now. The best thing I think th- one of the the best features of that is that you're going to be able to, in theory, keep dogs safer if people know that. Okay, because I used to have a dog, and there you would get into you know scuffles with other dogs and stuff. If you can, and it was one particular dog. Mm-hmm. If you can narrow that down, that's that's a legit need that it can yeah. be served, sort of thing. Yeah, 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 and. Yeah, I have a dog in my building that my dogs hate for some reason. Just for no, like, fucking hate the shit out of this dog. Yeah. Always bark. And the chick that has the dog hates me because of <laughs> yep. it. I don't care. But, um, yeah, you could set that up as, like, that's their villain or that's their Wesley Snipes. Um, <laughs> Good callback. Or Stallone, to depending home. on what team you're oh. on. Hey, it's Demolition Man, <laughs> man. Uh, I'm saying it. Well, I call it demo man mostly. So, so I think the way y'all should go. If I had my, if I, I don't know anything other than just I just signed in while we were doing the podcast. Mm-hmm. But being that utility, because there's still a lot of bad information out there. Like what dog park? What the dog parks alone? Mm-hmm. I'd stick with that first and just yeah, go exactly. Let's let's crowdsource as much information from the users to go. What's the best ones? When are they open? Because yep. they they have open and close yeah. times. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's just a park, right? Just throw oh, exactly. them over the fence, jump that fence. Well, the one that's under, <laughs> the one that's, I go to near me is right under an underpass, mm-hmm. which is awesome use of land. A. Eh? Yeah. I, Shaded. Kudos yeah, to really. the city for doing something kind of, that's a really smart use of that land. Yeah, right? I really like that. And then <clears throat> when it's raining, it's also awesome because exactly. I can just, it's the best rain weather park around really. Right. So it's that's the only a, one. That's Probably that insider exactly. information because you might not go outside with the dogs if it's yeah. if it's monsooning or something. Exactly. Like that. Um, yeah, I think you can really start there and then go, then get out to the vet veterinarians mm-hmm. and get out to the oh here's the uh, boutique dog stores. Yep. Um, here's the places to get. Uh, we have to get special food for the dogs. Artisan mm-hmm. food. Yeah. Without yeah. Without we food. have to get we have to get some <laughs> cured food. aged. Yep. Horse meat. And then you know what it is? then you start working with like BarkBox or someone like oh, that, and kind of infusing some uh, some preferred advertisers, yeah. premium preferred partners. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. we're in this together. Yeah, and it's so a really direct. So we had a similar idea <clears throat> in the fitness community that was like this. Uh, it didn't work out, but it was it was that I was like, all right, how are you going to raise revenue over time? And it eventually became that thing of like, we'll be a good resource first. You know, keep keep having salient information to get those daily active users for a while, yeah. right? It's like the podcast. Yep. You know? Yeah. Same even, idea. Even though we... We're not going to try and sell something that sucks. Right. And you got to go into it like I did with stand-up, knowing that, like, look, it it may have to just be a hobby until it gets paid, right? Mm-hmm. And it may have to be a passion, but don't quit on it because it's not raising revenue now. But also don't be lazy that, you know... I feel, I feel like I've been lazy with this show. We can do a lot more, and I just haven't done it. It's okay, buddy. We're, we're going to get there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not killing there. myself over it. Yeah, I'm just saying. Exactly. The, <laughs> the name of the podcast. Yep. No, the sweat on that note. What about my sweat You done? My ears are hot. Thanks for listening. SweatEquityPod.com. Tell a friend about, about this podcast. Love one. And touch social, of course. <laughs> Good. 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 Guys. Brian, you're on top of it, man. Good job. Thank you very much. What about my sweat equity?